Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. This is Awake and Live. I'm really excited about today's broadcast. I want to quickly go to Facebook here and make sure that the privacy setting is off so you guys can go ahead and share it. Um, in the meantime, you could just comment at the bottom. You could say hello. Tell us where you're watching from. All right. Just made it public. It's good to go. So you can go ahead. You can share this at the bottom. I know that you're going to want to share this show. Lots of testimonies are going to be shared. Um, lots of amazing things are going to be shared today. So anyway, comment at the bottom. I like this to be a little bit interactive as well. So if you have a question, I know I can't answer every question. I know that you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to get to all of them. But if you put something at the bottom and I see it and it's kind of relevant to where we're going, then I could ask um, our guest that question. Or if you have prayer requests, feel free to send them, because at the end of the show, we always like to pray. Um, however, the spirit leads us for you guys, our audience. Thank you so much for watching. We got some people tuning in now. Thank you, Margie Florent for watching. Francine, thank you guys for being on here. I just want to announce to you Immersed Conference in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. It's January 20th. We have Kathy Bixel, Ryan Bastris, some beautiful people, a powerful worship team. It's a day set aside to just encounter the glory of God, to just be refilled and fueled going into 2018. So it's in Perth Amboy, the city that our ministry is constantly, um, we're constantly pouring into. Every week we lead outreaches to this city. We're just going to the streets. We're just loving people who are lost. We're praying for the sick. We're just seeing Jesus touch lives, people who are homeless, people who are broken, just people that are walking around with nothing else to do. We just meet them, just encourage them, prophesy to them, just love on them. And I know those who come out with us and a lot of people who follow the ministry are, are going to be really excited about the broadcast because we're going to share a lot of stories like that as well, as well today. But even this Saturday, we've been taking a break on our outreaches because of, you know, there's been a lot of bad weather and then Christmas time, but we're doing an outreach this Saturday. Um, so this Saturday we're going out. I'm going to send, I'm going to do a post in a couple minutes here after the, after the broadcast, I'm going to post and let you know all the information that you need to know about our outreach this Saturday. So come and join us. If you're in the area, it's going to be amazing time to stretch yourself, but to, to think about others and to love on others and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So anyway, book launch also, before I get Darren on here, book launch is um, for Immersed in His Glory with Destiny Image Publishers. That's going to be launched this, um, it's going to be the 16th, which is soon. It's only a few days from now. And I'm going to be doing an online course through Facebook Live, an eight um, part course where I'm just going to go into the subject matter of the book to really bless you guys and give you a taste of what it's all about. So Anyway, I don't want to intro too long here. I want to give as much time as possible to our guest here today. His name is Darren Wilson. I know a lot of you know him. I posted and I got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback. I have I went to Bible school at Christ for the Nations for three years. I was with uh, Heidi and Roland Baker's ministry for a few years in Mozambique. And then even in Jersey and all the different churches we've ministered to and all over the place, they know about furious love, finger of God, father of lights. And it's just had a huge impact on my life, my family, our church, but also different ministries and churches all over the world. So this is a little bit about Darren before I get him on here. He's the founder of Wanderlust Productions, a film and television production company that creates, that focuses on creating media that powerfully advances the kingdom of God around the world. And that's so true. So he's had films like Finger of God, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Reborn, and they're doing a whole lot more. They have a television series. They're doing a TV uh, program. They're doing all kinds of stuff that he is going to share with you about here on the show. But let me get Darren on the program. How you doing, Darren? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Very good. Thank you so much for uh, coming on here today. Sure. Yeah. So I know a lot of people were excited about having you on here. A lot of people have seen your shows and and um, your 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 movies, your, your um, and all that stuff. So I know some people may not know who you are, maybe are not familiar with your film. So maybe can you just share with us a, a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so uh, I've been making movies for, gosh, 10, 11 years now. Um, before before that, my previous life, I was actually a college professor. So I uh, started teaching in the, at a university in Chicago when I was 23 years old. So um, I was just a young pup. But uh, yeah, and then the Lord kind of um, uh, kind of roped me into to making these movies. I never never wanted to be a, a filmmaker. Uh, I just I wanted to be a writer. 
but uh, he he had bigger plans for me. That's what I found with the Lord. He always his plans are always a lot bigger than uh, than your plans. So true. That's so true. So I know you spoke about it in Finger of God a bit, Furious Love. It's kind of a theme throughout your movies. You share about this, but what like put you on this journey, this incredible journey of just traveling all over the world to wild places, just filming God, his love and his power, touching people's lives? Yeah. I mean, you know, as far as like my testimony goes, I, you have to understand um, when I started making Finger of God, I mean, I was barely a Christian at the time. Um I just, uh, I, I was, um, I grew up in the church, and so I kind of had a, I had a head knowledge of the Lord, but I didn't really, He hadn't really touched my heart, and I was pretty much just kind of afraid of Him for most of my life. And then, uh, then He got a hold of me. He, uh, I had a radical, wild encounter with Him up in uh, Toronto in two thousand five, I believe it was two thousand six, and um, and he just he asked me to make this this movie and at the time I thought it was a, a short film I'd never made a movie before in my life um, and uh, so I just borrowed some equipment from my um, the university where I taught and started out just shooting stuff around Chicago just different meetings that were going on and it just kept kind of like ballooning and, and building um, and then wound up you know heading overseas for, to to a few places and you know made the whole movie I think for like twenty thousand dollars total. I was just just covering my travel, made it completely by myself, and um, figured I'd be lucky if a thousand people in the world ever saw it. And uh, it was just, you know, it was just kind of like I did it out of obedience to the Lord and um, uh, put it out, and figured I'd go back to just my my day job, go back to teaching, and it, then it just kind of exploded, and um, away we went. <laughs> Yeah, so I know even in that you were talking about your, your your faith journey at that time. You said you were barely a Christian. You know, you didn't have a whole lot of experience with the supernatural and all that kind of stuff. And but it was your first film, I believe, Finger of God, where you recorded manna and and gold dust and all of these supernatural, you know, things that take place in certain yeah. sections of the church. How did that, you know, especially just coming out of that, challenging yourself? How did that? How did that affect you seeing those things? Well, you know, people always ask me like, when when was was there an event that happened that kind of just changed your mind? Because, you know, I went into it. I, I wouldn't say I went into that film trying to disprove anything, but I went into it not really believing that it was probably real. And, but I was, I figured I'd, I'd suspend my disbelief just long enough to go film. Um, so for me, it wasn't, there wasn't ever one moment where I'm like, Oh gosh, now I believe in the supernatural. It was more just like a constant barrage of like, of, of just seeing things, of hearing stories, of seeing credible people telling me stories, yeah. people who didn't want, didn't have a ministry, they didn't want to get anything out of it. Um, yeah. And it's just, you know, over a, a year of just traveling around and filming, you come out of that thing and you're like, I think I actually believe this stuff is true. You know, I think, I, I think the Lord's actually still moving in miracles. And so it was just this kind of, a, it's kind of a really slow process. Um, because I think it, and I think that's the way the Lord had to do it with, with the way I'm wired. I just yeah. one little one thing isn't going to do it. It has to be a number of things. Yeah, yeah. He's so merciful. He's so patient with us and yeah. our unbelief and in our and all that. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's kind. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's kind. He's loving. He's patient. And even you know, for me, in terms of the supernatural, with certain things, you know, you know, we see in the Bible healings, we see in the Bible deliverance, and all that stuff. But you know, you don't necessarily see holy laughter or you know certain manifestations that you filmed in Finger of God. And for me, it was always like, and I, I know that you spoke about this in your film, that what's the fruit? Are people being changed? You know, is Jesus being glorified? You know, or, or you know, so I love that you highlighted that because so many people they want to throw away and call everything demonic. But ultimately, is Jesus being glorified? Are people being saved? Is this, you know, is this pointing people to Him? Yeah, uh, to me, that's always been the that's always been the test, you know, because I, I I come across a lot of strange things and I meet a lot of strange people, and uh, you know, and but again, I just have to look at okay, what's what's coming from this? What is the fruit of what you're doing? Of what of, of this event that's happening? And uh, mm -hmm. leading people closer to the heart of the Father, then it's it's always going to be from the Father if it's sowing confusion and uh, discord and um, you know if, if it's bringing if it's bringing a, a negative you know that's it's it's pretty easy actually to figure out what's from the Lord what is it is what I've kind of discovered 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say for those who just jumped in now, feel free to share this at the bottom. Hi to everyone who's watching right now. And um, anyway, so yeah, man, I know that we've been speaking a lot about and I've, I've been really touched by our films, even, you know, Furious Love, the way you highlighted the love of God. You spoke about a lot of demonic stuff. You know, you were in a lot of dark places in these films and man, just even watching Father of Lights and Holy Ghost, all these different situations that you've been put in. Is there is there like a few stories or a few times that you can remember and say like wow I'm completely changed coming out of this thing like that that changed me forever in the best way. Well, how much time you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do like five broadcasts or more, I'm sure. But yeah, it was some some things that were highlighted. Yeah, I'll tell you that you know when people ask me what's the most memorable thing you've ever filmed, there's one answer, um, and it will always be the most important thing for me. Is it, but it was it's and it's probably the, it's probably what I'm best known for. But it, for me personally, it was the most impactful. Uh, which where we we filmed and got into the the Dome of the Rock in Israel for at the end of Father of Light. Um, just because it was just so miraculous, it was so impossible. And you know that what, for me it was it was it wasn't just like a really cool thing that God did. It was the it was the first time in my life where. Um, when I when I prayed for something, my my faith that God would do it finally outweighed my doubt that He would. And and you know it was to me that was the moment when I truly became a friend of God, um, because it was it was a true partnership. That was one where I didn't do it because He told me to to do it. I did it because I wanted to do it, and I asked Him if He would make it happen, and He did. You know, and it was it was kind of the the that. And it was the last thing that we filmed for Father of Lights. And so it was, to me, it's a perfect precursor for what would come for, you know, the two Holy Ghost films where, you know, those movies then became, okay, the whole thing is about just partnership. It's all about like, what do you want to do? And, and like, you just, you just, let's just partner on this thing and, and have some fun. But uh, for me, that was the most impactful because, because it was like, it's okay. I finally became, I was no longer a servant. I was a friend. That's really good. I love, I think one thing I really love about that, 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 um, I think you, that was in Father of Lights. Yeah. Right. I think one thing I really loved about that was the fact that you guys are just walking around Israel, you know, you, Todd and your crew, you're just walking around and you're praying for people just because that's what you do. You just love the people around you. Right. And, and the one man that you prayed for, you happen to bump into him later. And then he wanted to be in the key to help you get in there just to see the orchestration of God that he literally plans our steps and he's orchestrating everything. Even we have no clue. We have no clue what he's doing sometimes, but he's leading us. Yeah. And and, uh, I'll I'll tell you to to peel back the curtain on that whole thing a little bit, just to explain how amazing God is. Um, You know, people think, uh, I think people get the, the impression that like we kind of set all this stuff up ahead of time. It's definitely like not the case. I'm not that smart. But um, for that one, you know, we, we had just arrived in Jerusalem. We only had like a day and a half there. And, um, you know, Todd wanted to take a shower. So, you know, we're just hanging out in the hotel and then we just, you know, it's like, okay, well, I guess we can go, you know, some guys were resting and, so we just kind of like we we finally we mic Todd up and we and we head out and you know where we were, um, you know what the, there's if you've ever been to Israel in the old city there's a number of different gates where you, where you enter into the old city, and where we actually were we were right n- near the the Christian entrance like there's a there's a Christian gate and there's the Muslim gate and all that stuff, and so I mean it would have made the most sense for us just to walk into the old city and it, it was literally right across the street. And they said, well, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess we should go to like the Muslim. Let's go down. Let's walk down to the Muslim quarter and just let's start there. We want to get into a Muslim place, you know? And it was just like, we, we just weren't in a hurry. We weren't like, we we're just taking our time. And, um, and the fact that it was like, it, if, if we would have, if we would have showed up where we showed up um, five minutes earlier or five minutes later, none of it would have happened. Yeah. Like how he does this stuff when everything to us just seems super random and like, it's just incredible. I don't, I don't, I don't know how he does what he does. No, you just, you just make room for him. And sometimes I, I feel like this is something the Lord's taught me, you know, we're looking for like big supernatural, like a vision, a confirmation, you know, something massive that we could really anchor our faith in. But a lot of the times it's subtle. You're just making choices as you acknowledge him. Yeah. 
And, you know, his voice oftentimes sounds like, you know, our voice or just, you know, we get a thought and it's his thought. We get a feeling and it's his feeling. And then we see, boom, just the, you know, how God provided and came through. And it's like, man, you know, sometimes it's subtle. You know, yeah. it's it's almost it's almost seems like most of the time it's subtle. I would say most yeah. of the time it's subtle. We we think it's going to be. See, people sit down with me and they think it's all going to be like, tell me these crazy stories. I'm like, it's just it, it feels like happenstance half the time. You know what I mean? So it's it's. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, hey, listen, you know, that was that, that that's a story that really changed your life. And I know I've seen it in your films. You've been in some pretty crazy situations as well. Some hectic, almost scary. Like people look at it and they're like, man, I'd be terrified to be in that situation. Or, yeah. you know, like, has there <laughs> maybe one or two things can you share with me where you're like, man, I got myself in a situation right here and it's it really challenged me. Oh yeah, there's been plenty of those. Um, I, I'd say the most frightened I've ever been was uh, again in Father of Lights, where <laughs> we went uh, to see the witch doctor. Um, and if you've seen that movie, you know, like the, it opens with the the machete. We call it the machete village. Um, and then later in the movie, we go see the witch doctor. And what actually a lot of people don't know is we in real time filming. We filmed at the Machete Village where all these people showed up with machetes and we thought we were going to get chopped up. Uh, and then literally we get in the car, we drive 10 minutes, and we're at the witch doctor's house. So it was like one right after the other. But I remember the night before we went to – the night before I knew we were going to go film uh, with this witch doctor who was notorious in the region. He'd, 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 he was, he'd killed – I think it was two or three missionary, Christian missionaries. Um, showed up at their house and like and cursed them and like 500 Christians came together to break the curse and they that they but they all died three days later like I'm just like what kind of curse can't you know what I mean like how can it was just crazy but um so then we we're gonna go to the guy's house and like knock on his front door so um that was like I remember I, I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and I was just like I was covered in like and like, just it was. I have to just. It's just called a spirit of fear. It was just. It was so thick. It was so heavy. Um, and I'm just like, I'm gonna die. You know what I mean? And like, I just. I was so, so, so terrified. Um, and then you know, but then you know, if you've seen the movie, by the time we get there, the Lord had already taken care of business before we even showed up. And the guys, he's terrified of us because you know the Lord had stripped him of all of his all of his powers before we ever showed up. And that's why he was he wouldn't come out because he's terrified of us. And it's yeah. just like, you know, time and time again, the Lord does this stuff where we get warned, like, if anybody catches you filming, they're going to kill you. They're going to, you know, somebody was three weeks before we filmed in Thailand, somebody had, had gotten caught filming in the brothels with their cell phone. They, they'd taken them to the roof and thrown them off the roof and killed them. And we're walking in with big cameras, you know what I mean? And it's like without permission. And, um, but, you know, by the end of that week, the, the bar moms and the, the, the heads of the brothels were like, were, were helping us. They're helping us get better shots. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the the favor that the Lord, you know, has. What, what I've discovered when you when you're walking in obedience with Him, you really don't have anything to worry about. It's when you yeah. get ahead of Him and you say like, "I'm going to do this because you want to experience something," because you know you you um, you you, you want to kind of. You put your own desires ahead of what he's asking you to do. That's when a lot of times you got pe people get in trouble. I've discovered, but mm -hmm. I, that's why I've just, I've just at this point, I just do what he tells me to do. Yeah, yeah. Like my wife and I, we were in Cambodia for six months with Iris, and they were they're doing a whole lot of stuff in Phnom Penh and, and, and other parts of Cambodia. But we go into brothels and we'd go into temples and we just worship in the temples. And we've we've been to really dark parts of the world, and people look at us and they're like man, you know, like, how did you do that? Isn't it really heavy? Isn't it really, you know? And so I know a lot of Christians, they've watched Furious Love, especially in, like in Furious Love, where, you know, you guys went to to, to festivals of straight sorcery and, and witchcraft and all this stuff. And you've been to, remember with Will Hart, you were in Thailand with the Lady Boys and you were you were ministering to them. And and what would you say to Christians that they're, 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 they're scared to go into dark places or to minister to people that are, you know, that are different, that seem scary or, at least possessed or, you know, have some kind of sorcery in their lives. What would you, cause I know at that point your faith is being strengthened and you were going to those places. Yeah. Well, I think the, the easy thing is just to remind them that the Lord gave you a spirit of fear, hmm. you know, he gave you a spirit of boldness and, 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 you know, my best friend's a lion. 
And so like, what the heck am I afraid of? You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I just look at what Jesus did. Jesus wasn't scared of, Jesus has conquered everything. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, people are different. There's dark places. I, you know, I always get nervous around people who they, they can't, they can't walk into some place because they say the atmosphere is too heavy or too dark. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like you should change the atmosphere with your presence. That's right. You know, because to me, it's like you're taking, you're already walking in defeated. You're like, oh, this place is, it's too heavy. It's too much. I can't, you know, I can't function or something's going to jump on me or whatever. It's like, no, it's not. You know what I mean? Like, stop it. You're just hiding behind excuses. You're hiding behind fear. And yeah. so when we walk into places, it's like, you know, when, for instance, when we filmed in, uh, in Holy Ghost, we filmed in the, uh, the Hindu temple. It's one of the holiest places in like the world for Hindus. And, um, you know, that the, the, it was, you know, it was, it was heavy, it was, but it was dark, but it was still just a place. You know what I mean? And, you know, so I went into their Holy of Holies, which actually I found out later should have gotten me, I should have actually been killed for going in there being a Christian foreigner with a camera. Um, but I'm just like, Hey, what's going on in here? You know, and I just <laughs> walked in and like, everybody's looking at me and I'm like, Hey guys, what's up? You know, like, um, cause it's just like the Lord walks, if the Lord walks before you, what do you have to be afraid of? And so you know, we don't, we're not idiots. I'm not going to be like, you know, you have to be culturally sensitive and yet, you, you know, um, but as far as like, just like spiritual, like, again, if the Lord asked me to do it, if, if the Lord asks you to do it, then he's, he, you know, he's already put the angels in front of you to protect you. So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we really need a revelation, like you said, of the atmosphere we carry. We focus so much on the atmosphere around us, the demonic spirits, the heaviness, the false religion, instead of focusing on we have Christ living in us who has all authority in heaven and earth. We have yeah. Christ living on the inside of us who's the head of all principality and power, and everything's under his feet. That means everything's under my feet. You know, but we really need a revelation of that. And, you know, this is something I tell people, you know, the life of a Christian is not, it's not a comfortable life. I don't know who told us that. I don't know who said, if you're going to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, it's going to be comfortable. You're going to have all your needs met, you know, and everything's going to be cushy all the time. You'll never have a fear, concern, or a worry, but he gave us the comforter. And this is something that Todd White says all the time. He gave us the comforter because we're going to be uncomfortable. Right. He's going to challenge us outside of our comfort zones into the realm of faith, into the supernatural. And anyway, I, that's, that's one thing I really... I love about your films. I think your focus is important. You know, if you're going and focusing on atmosphere, you know, I've been with charismatics and they're like, we're going to go change the atmosphere. I'm like, what's he changing the atmosphere for? Like, go change people. You know what I mean? Like your focus shouldn't be the atmosphere. Your focus should be people, the people who are in that atmosphere. The atmosphere is not going to go away. You know, and if it does, it's just going to come back tomorrow when you're not there. So like, yeah. let's go in and let's actually like get the, let's go after the thing that, that moves God's heart, which is yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like if we can just start to like, just, just throw some of this, this goofiness away and just yeah. go after people, you're going to be fine. Exactly. And you can't really, if, if you want to bring it back to the Bible, you can't, you, everything's about people. Everything's about loving people. You don't see much about shifting an atmosphere. You don't hear that language being spoken. This is kind of the language that we've developed, you know, right. in, the, in, in the charismatic camp, which is, you know, it's great. I don't mind language that's not in the Bible. You know, we, we have new right. language to describe things, but ultimately it's just about loving people into the light, out of the darkness. And that's that's what's so beautiful about it. And even in Furious Love, when you were talking about loving the people who were judging other people, those who were standing on the streets preaching repentance and all that stuff, how you even focused on that, how he loves even the Christians that are judgmental and hating yeah. on those who are in homosexuality and everything like that. And yeah, one, honey, one thing ahead, I discovered, sorry. you know, in ten years, I'd probably I'd say probably the biggest thing that I've discovered is that everybody is broken. Everybody. I'm Bill Johnson's broken. Todd White's broken. I'm broken. You're broken. Everybody is broken in some way, shape or form. And we're all just on our own journey. We're all on a path trying to trying to get to the heart of the father because so, he's the only one who can unbreak us. He's the only one who can make us whole. And so um, you, you may be less broken today than you were yesterday. But like, I just feel like if, if, I feel like that's why God has so much grace. I, I just wonder about this sometimes. Why? How, because I'll ask him, like, how can you be, have be so patient with people? And I think I, I think he just because he sees the fullness of our brokenness, and so he's like, even when he's on the cross, he sees the brokenness of those who put him there. And what does he say? He's like, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
You know what I mean? And so he like goes after their brokenness as opposed to being like, strike these people down. So like, I just feel like, man, if, if we can get that revelation, like we can then become a people of grace and a people of true love and not like just trying to get you to, be, to like kind of join our club, which is sometimes what Christianity becomes. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to share with those who are watching right now. Um, if um, I just got a message a minute ago that I broke out a little bit. If, um, if anything's breaking out, if you can't see me or Darren, just let me know at the bottom here. But um, I think everything's good right now. But um, so, yeah, feel free to share this at the bottom as well. But um, Darren, so this is one thing I wanted to ask you. Like, I, I think we, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, just about how sometimes God will lead you in a strong, dynamic way. But other times it's in a subtle way. You think it's like your own thought, but you're just kind of moving forward, taking ground. And you realize later that it's God. But um, I know you've been to crazy parts of the world all over the place, not just America, Italy, Africa, everywhere. Um, so what kind of, you know, what's, what's the process? Like, how do you decide where to go, who to have on your, cause you've had Will Hart, Todd White, Sean Bowles, amazing people. And then other people that, you know, maybe a lot of people didn't know who they were, but they were behind the scenes, living their lives, laying everything down. How do you, how do you kind of go about your films? Yeah, that way? no, uh, that's a good question. So it's different every time it's different for every movie. Um, but I can tell you, there's a few things that always happen. Like, I, I'm obviously like over the years I've learned to differentiate between like my own just random thoughts and ideas and what the thoughts that the Lord's given me. They just have a different like texture to them. Um, sometimes it's through dreams. Sometimes he's given me dreams or he's given other people dreams. Um, but you know, he's given, he's helped me out because I get a lot, of, a lot of people approaching me and like, you know, you have to check out this ministry, this person, this and that. And, um, so what he's done for me, a lot of this happens, I'd say 50 to 60 percent of the time is uh, he'll give me butterflies in my spirit when I hear something. And so, like, you could be telling me the coolest story ever. And I'm just like, that's really awesome. Like, somebody should go film that, you know, but then or you could just be telling me like a kind of a random. It's a like kind of cool story, but like I'll have like an explosion inside of me. And I'm just like, I have to go film that. I have to like whatever, you know, so that's especially like in the moment, that's, that's what he does a lot of times. Um, but most of the time it's just, you know, it's just a lot of prayer. It's just a lot of like, you know, allowing things to kind of run their course a little bit when you're developing things. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it's just little, I'll get pictures, I'll get visions, you know, that are just kind of like, yeah, again, they're, they're just a different texture than I, I would normally think. So it's just different. It's always different, but to me, that's, what's fun about it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I know that you've kind <clears> of <throat> when, when Finger of God came out and then you had Furious Love, um, you know, it really it really pioneered and opened up a way for so many more people. You know, other films started springing up. You know, people started stepping out on their dreams. People, you know, they are filmmakers and they're going out and they're doing similar things with their own taste, their own edge on it. Mm -hmm. But being someone who really pioneered it, you know, someone who really came out, it really wasn't happening in the Christian realm. Like what were some challenges that you faced in getting and getting this stuff out there? Well, I, I think it's the same challenge I face today. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same challenge everybody faces, which is, you know, the most expensive commodity today is time. That's every, that's the most expensive, but because nobody wants, there's only a, a finite amount of it. And there are, there are an infinite number of things that are vying for your attention. And so how do you get people's attention? How do you, how do you get them to invest an hour and a half of their time with you and with what you created. Now, I didn't think a whole lot about that when I made Finger of God because I, I, there's no, there's nobody's going to watch it anyway. So why would I worry about it? You know what I mean? I think about it a lot now, but like back then, it was just like it was such it was such the finger of the Lord on on that movie. I didn't do anything like it's so funny because like I, there's no strategy. There was no marketing plan. There's no publicity. It was I literally would just sit in, in my house and my phone would ring and people would be like, I want to do something with this. And it's like, OK, you know, like um, I met, you know, the, the head of acquisition of, of, for TBN um, by, by chance in Las Vegas. Like, you know, and it was just just doors all everything open and so there was it was the kind of 
I think that one really was a touchstone, though, because nobody had ever seen anything quite like it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think the closest that anybody had done was stuff that um, uh, George Otis Jr. did with the, uh, I think it's called the Super, Supernatural series or something like that. But those were like really long and kind of slow. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, I just think nobody ever seen it before. So when you do something truly unique and new, it just, you're going to find an audience. But, um, but yeah, so we've just, it's, it's always, I try, I've tried to put myself in the forefront of just coming up with like new ideas. Like we're the first people to turn churches into movie theaters. First people to take our movies out on tour around the world. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm willing to try new things. Um, I think it's just the creative bent in me. You know, I'm willing, yeah. I'm willing to like screw things up, you know, to show other people like do it this way. Don't do it this way, you know, because like if you don't try, like how are you going to know? Exactly. And that's how God is. He's creative. And, but even that, I think a lot of people, they focus on knocking on doors, opening up doors for themselves instead of just, you know, hearing from the father, getting along with the father, allowing him to do a work inside of them, something creative, something innovative, a new way of doing something, a new way of saying something, you know, that really expresses his heart and who he is. And then just going out and doing it like you weren't getting a paycheck right away. You dump money into your projects. You know what I mean? You were just doing stuff. There was no. You know, you, you had no clue where it was going to take you, but it was a passion in you. Something was sparked in you. And then God just opened the doors. Like you said, you met people in random places. You didn't set up those meetings. He just he just takes us further than we could possibly ever imagine going. We just say yes and follow our passions. I believe. Yeah. That. And I, I tell people this all the time. If God's behind it, you can't fail. It's not yeah. possible because God doesn't do failure. He, it, he doesn't know how to fail. Uh, because he spoke everything to existence. Everything has the, everything in existence is like, is subject to his voice because it was created by his voice. So if he says like, I want you to do this, you know, then if you can take it, that's why you can take his words to the bank because like all of creation must bend to his will. And, uh, you know, so I think if, if you're constantly running up against like a wall, well, you might want to rethink some stuff. You may need to like have a really, hard conversation with the Lord. Like, is this actually what you want me to do? Or am I like, is this what I want to do? And it's not necessarily what you want to do. Because I failed before I made finger of God. I failed at everything creative I ever tried. Everything. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, I was, my whole past was is riddled with failure until I did, I did the one thing that God asked me to do creatively. And then everything took off from there. I love that. I love that. Well, like what, what, what you said, um, all creation has to bend to his will. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's that just that just hit me right there. But hey, man, that's that's really good. I know a lot of people are scared of rejection, scared of failure, scared of being rejected. Fear is the big, uh, you know, is, is, is one of the devil's greatest strategies or one of the most effective ones to hinder us from really stepping out and being who we are. And um, you've really challenged that spirit. You've stepped out of your comfort zone, and there's been a tremendous fruit from it. And so many people are benefiting from it. So what would you say to a few people on here that, that are just being held back by fear? They know God's called them to something, but they're being held back by fear. Well, I would say this. Fear is the ministry of the devil. You know, if, if freedom is the ministry of God, then fear is the, is the ministry of the devil. And if, if, if you are partnering with fear, then what you're basically saying, Wow. I go to Starbucks, I order coffee, and I leave. You know, it's not like I'm not trying to get the whole place safe. So for me to go do the things he's asking me to do is the complete opposite of, um, of just of who I am. But like, if he asked me to do it, I want to be, his, I want to be God's best friend. And the only way you can be friends with God is to be obedient. And so like, if you're, if you're allowing fear to keep you from doing what God's calling you to do, then you're, you're walking in disobedience mm -hmm. and you will never be a friend of God. It's impossible. You know, it, Faith is faith is, isn't the absence of fear. Faith is 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 walking forward even when you are afraid. Is is believing even when you can't see how it's going to work. Yeah. And you know it. The you know Hebrews tells us it's impossible to please God 
without faith. It's impossible. And so, like, if you're if you're not walking in faith, then you're not pleasing to him. And so it's a hard truth, but some people, I have a sense, some of the people watching this need a little bit of a kick in the butt, maybe. Um, because it's <laughs> if just... you read the Bible, hey, First John, you know, he, he didn't pull any punches. He didn't... Uh... <laughs> Just stop it. Stop it. Like you have like the, the God of the universe is on your side. Like what's, what's your problem? You know what I mean? Like, and so and if somebody said, what's the worst that can happen? So I always tell people, what's the worst that can happen? Somebody says, no. All right. Yeah. yeah. Peace out. I'm going to go talk to this guy, you know, like whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Some people face death. And a lot of times here in America, I always say this a lot of times here in America, we just face a rejection. Someone calling us a name, yeah. calling us radical, you know, but like, and you've even, recorded people who have faced death, people that have been martyred, you know, people that were on, you know, on the verge of martyrdom or being persecuted. But I want you, I want you to share with the people, the new stuff that you're doing, because we've talked about your documentaries and how they've changed and impacted so much, but I know you're doing um, new documentaries as well as TV programs. Tell people some new stuff that you're doing. Um, so, okay. Um, we're fit. I'm finally finishing up this kind of season. I call it of, um, TV shows. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting back to movies. So uh, we did two two seasons of a show called Adventures with God, and then uh, I'm working on the second season of a of another show called Questions with God. So those the the first two seasons of AWG and the first season of Questions are out now. You can go get them. Um, but as soon as I'm finished with that, basically right now I'm starting fundraising for my next big film it's called The God Man. Uh, we have Finger of God Two is actually coming out this year. Um, now I produced that. It, that's that's going to be the first one that we released that I didn't actually direct. My good friend Will Hacker did, um, and uh, so he. We're actually in, in post production on that right now. The whole thing is shot. He got some amazing stuff, um, and then uh, so I'll be filming the God Man this year, which is uh, the, my kind of my final Godumentary, I guess you call it, um, my final kind of God adventure film. Uh, it's all about Jesus, and I've, I've never been more excited about a movie than in this one. It's gonna be—it's the big one. It's the big finale. It's gonna be awesome. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's kind of what the the two kind of big films that uh, that are coming in the future. We also have WPTV, which I'm super excited about. Uh, basically, has everything we've ever done uh, on there, as well as tons of extra exclusive stuff that you only find on there. So you can access it for from apple tv roku we have an, we have apps for it it's awesome so wptv check that out because it's, it's like my little creative sandbox and i love it <laughs> <laughs> i highly recommend it as well i'm going to put the links and all that stuff in here um and the status in the comment section at the end but um you mentioned the god man being um one of the films that you're most excited about can you can you give us a little taste like just something to expect in that film well, it's going to be different. It'll be a little different than you've ever than anything that we've made before. Um, gosh, what do I? What can I tell? So the problem is, I know I know where we're going. I just don't know what God's going to do when we're there. It's always the case. So I can tell you this right now. Um, I know we're going to we're going to film in Alaska. We'll film in uh, Haiti, in Fiji, uh, Israel, and Japan. Those are kind of the big the big trips. Um, and um, what what the Lord's gonna? It's basically what we're doing is we're we're, we're asking we're kind of focusing on C.S. Lewis, Lewis's famous trilemma question, which is Jesus must be one of three things: he's either a liar, he's a lunatic, or he's actually who he says he is. He's the Lord. So that's going to be kind of the the gist of the of the film, and uh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be big, expansive. It's going to be the best one of them all, and I can't wait to make it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love, I, you know, I think one of the best parts of your films and everything that you do is just the spontaneity, you know, just the spontaneity. What the Lord does, you know, he, he may highlight a few places for you to go. He gives you a theme, kind of what he's going to, you know, what he's going to be doing. But in the middle of your filming, he's going to be speaking to you. You're going to be doing random stuff. God's going to break out in incredible ways, miracles, different things. Yep. And that's and that's one of the amazing elements, the fact that you're going all around and the Lord's, you're, you're partnering with him. You're co-laboring with him. Yeah. And he's just showing himself incredible, like he is. Yeah, my crew always asks me, "Okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to Alaska. What 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 do we do when we get when we get there?" I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> we'll right. figure it out. We'll figure out what he wants to do." And uh, it's yeah. ter- terrifying way to make a movie, but it's also it's it's. Uh, I think God yeah. God really likes he really likes faith. 
Yeah, I always one thing I love to say is that, you know, the will of God or the supernatural realm is right outside of your comfort zone. You know, the life of the spirit is a life of risk. It's a life of faith. It's a life of being uncomfortable. But at the same time, the the reward is eternal. The reward is so worth it when you see his hand and him break through. And that's just a life of the spirit. Those who are led by the spirit, you have no clue where they're going or where they're coming from. They're just being led. They're being moved. But then you see later his hand. You see the effect. You see what he yep. does. And um, it's so beautiful. Even just going on a missions trip. So many people go on a missions trip like, oh, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to see. But really, if God's involved and you're partnering with him, laboring with him, you're going to come back with stories and things that, man, I, you, 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 you can't plan that stuff. I think Absolutely. some of the greatest miracles, are the amazing testimonies that I have and I've seen is just you didn't plan it going in. You couldn't. It was just the hand of God moving as you as you move with him. Yeah, absolutely. So, that's so good. I'm excited about all you're doing. Literally, um, for those who just tuned in now, Darren Wilson, the producer of Furious Love, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Reborn. He's got um, WPTV now. I'm going to put the link for the website so you have access to all these archives and, and special footage that's never been in any of his documentaries. And also his film you know, is, uh, what, what was the name of your TV series again? It was Questions with God, and there, were, and there was another one. There's Adventures with God, and then there's Questions with God. So Adventures with God is kind of like looks back at kind of all the, the things we've filmed over the years and breaks them down, and, and I'm able to take like individual adventures and really expand them out. Um, and then, we, and then I, I shot this, uh, these kind of these new roundtable discussions with a lot of people who are in the films. Uh, and so those kind of are peppered throughout Adventures. Questions with God is, takes those roundtables and really – it's it's like the the totality of the of kind of the conversation that we have around these big questions. So it's kind of like uh, if you're familiar with like Walking Dead, Talking Dead. It's kind of like it's kind of like that. But um, hopefully I didn't offend people by bringing up a zombie TV show. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's uh, that's kind of the 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 idea behind it. Okay. All right. I know you tackle a lot of hard questions that we all have regarding healing and regarding tragedy and all kinds of stuff. You know, it's just you, Jamie Galloway, some other friends um, around the table with you just discussing these things. You know, people that have been in ministry for years that have seen God, that have stretched themselves, that have seen the miraculous. So anyway, um, people are saying thank you, Lee, Camilla, everyone's saying thank you, Darren, for coming on. People are so encouraged. Hey, everybody. Um, you can go ahead and share this here at the bottom because I'm going to have Darren pray as he feels led. One thing that I felt highlighted that we spoke about earlier is just this element of fear, this element of fear. And you and you really spoke some strong words of truth to help shake people out of the deception that fear brings, you know. And um, anyway, I would love for you to pray um, about that specifically. There's people that are watching. They're they're scared of um, not having enough. They're scared of not being enough. They're scared of not having the right words. They're scared of failing all of that stuff. And I know you've challenged yourself for years in these areas and seen a lot of breakthrough and victory, but anyway, however you feel led to pray, I would just love for you to pray for our audience. Sure. Well, father, I just thank you for everybody who's watching this. And I just pray God that you will break all the spirit of fear. I pray that you will, um, that you will implant in, in your children, father, a, um, a strong desire to be obedient and a strong desire to, to see your kingdom come no matter the cost, no matter what it costs them. Uh, even if the cost is pride, the cost is uh, money, the cost is whatever. But Father, I just ask that uh, you will just bring a, a spirit of peace and of boldness over everybody who's watching this. And uh, I ask for new ideas. I ask for new, um, new sounds. I ask for new um, new concepts. And I ask, Lord, that you will guide all of our steps in a way that only you can and that you will make our, our path straight. Um, and let your kingdom come, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, amen. Even as Darren was praying, I just saw a really simple picture. I just saw tools in, someone, in, 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 in hands, like wrenches and screwdrivers. I saw different tools. I believe that it represented the gifts that are on your life. And I saw like chains breaking off of off of the hands and you holding the tools. And, you know, I just feel like as you, God's given you gifts, whether it's um, to be social and to, to easily spark conversations with people or whether it's in film or whether it's, you know, to speak and, and, and formulate messages or whether it's social media and all this different stuff that you're just, you're just keen to with technology. God has given you gifts to use. And as you just say yes to use them and as you abide in him, you allow him to love on you as, and, you, and you stay in his presence and you allow him to be the focal point of your life. You just give him a yes to use those gifts 
that he has graciously given to you. You can't earn them. You can't deserve them. They're just God gifts that he, that he has given to you. You'll see the chains of fear break off your life. And I love the definition people often say, and I've heard it, that boldness isn't you know, the absence of fear. Boldness is doing something anyway. You just do it anyway. Even though you have some fear, even though it is uncomfortable, you just do it. And as you do it, you see the kingdom come, first of all, because chains are really held on to us. The devil loves to put fear on us because he clogs up the kingdom on the inside of us. We have Jesus. We have the kingdom of the heaven. And he loves to put fear on us so we don't release the kingdom of God. So if you have a tool, a weapon, it's just something God's given you. Just begin to take steps in that direction. And you'll see the fear fall off, even if it, you know, it's on you at first. But I'm telling you, just like Darren said, you are not given a spirit of fear. You're given a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Stop partnering with darkness and start partnering with Jesus. And um, anyway, Darren, I know you've inspired so many lives. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on the show with me today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it means a whole lot. And uh, I'm just going to stay on here and make a couple announcements. But thanks again, Darren. Talk soon. Thank you. Hey guys, so that was Awaken Live with Darren Wilson talking about his films and everything that he's doing. I'm going to put his link in the status and comment section when this is done. But um, I want you to sign up for Immerse Conference. If you're in New Jersey, if you're in New York, Pennsylvania, there's going to be powerful prophetic ministry, glory-filled times of worship, just one day set apart to encounter Jesus. And it's coming up. It's not this weekend, but the, the following weekend. So come out to Immerse Conference, sign up. I'll put the link in the, in the comment section below in the status section as well. And I'm going to be posting a lot more encouragements. If you want to sign up for our newsletter, you can go to our website. That's www.lifeportoutintl.org. And I'll put that also in the comment section so you can easily click on it. But on our website, we have archives of Awaken Lives. You could watch a whole bunch of them when you have some time or while you're going about your day. We also have our events that we're doing, the different live broadcasts, not only on our platform, but also a whole bunch coming up in January and February on other people's shows and on radio and different things like that. But you also hear about our outreaches, our monthly worship and prayer gatherings where the glory of God's been pouring out dynamically. And so on our website, you can find out about becoming a partner, about giving to the ministry because we travel all over the place. My wife, my little girl, and so we, we travel as a family. If you want to partner with the gospel, you can go to our website as well. But there's all kinds of information there, booking and everything like that. But um, in terms of, you know, you can go to the website, you can find out a whole lot more information. Something I want to announce is in April 21st to the 28th, I'm going with a close friend of mine, Evangelist Mark Turner, and we're going to do six days of crusades in the Dominican Republic in three different cities. So it's all about souls. It's all about winning souls for the kingdom of God, about introducing lost sons and daughters to their father. And that's what this ministry is all about, reaching the lost, igniting the church and serving the poor. And we believe, we believe strongly that we're supposed to not only minister to the nations, but we're ministering to our neighbors. That's why every week we're doing an outreach in a dark inner city area in New Jersey called Perth Amboy. And we're doing a lot of work in our area here in Jersey, but we're also traveling to the Philippines, Dominican Republic, all over the world and all over the U.S., igniting the church, reaching the lost and serving the poor. So we have a lot of amazing things that, that, that that's going on here this year. That's going to require more partners, but we just, we got, he is amazing. He's going to provide every need, but we love you guys. We have Chad Johnson, another fiery evangelist, another awesome guy, wrote a book called A Thousand Risks, coming on Awaken Live on January 17th. But sign up for our newsletter on our website because we're going to be sending out encouraging videos, prophetic videos, you know, for, for this season, for this time to encourage you, teachings of the word of God that will build up and strengthen your faith. But we'll also update you on stuff that's going on. We'll share testimonies on these newsletters. And we're not going to be bombarding your inbox, you know, every single you know, you know, every few days, it's going to be one or two times a month at most. And we'll just send you a newsletter to encourage you and to edify you. I'm Michael Lombardo. This is Life Poured Out International. Our mission statement is reach the lost, ignite the church and serve the poor. And actually, before I go, um, I'm releasing a book called Immersed in His Glory with Destiny Image Publishers. Heidi Baker, Matt Sorger, Robert Slaredon, beautiful people endorse this book and believe in the message. But I'm releasing it and I'm going to be doing an online course eight weeks of immersed in his glory. I'm going to just dive into the message. I'm going to share just nuggets for free. Just give them to you so you get a taste of this book 
Um, and so, you know, you could you could be ministered to and blessed by it. So love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to Awaken Live, we literally do a broadcast once or twice a week. Even we're getting a whole uh, slew of amazing people that are going to be on this show like Darren Wilson and others. But anyway, we love you and you are invaluable to my wife and I, Selena Lombardo. You're invaluable to us both here at Life Poured Out International. Bless you.